Los Angeles, of which Hollywood is strictly speaking only a district, covers the largest physical area of any city in the world. And its population has risen from two million at the end of the war to six million at the present time. But well, almost as many cars live there as people, an average of three to a family. The car section of the population increases almost hourly, so that the vast Hollywood freeway which spans the city was barely completed before it was already obsolete. Car exhaust is held down in the valley by a temperature inversion and an almost entire lack of wind. Add to this the effluent from the oil refineries that have sprung up all over the outskirts of Los Angeles and you have the two principal reasons for the smog. A traffic cop told me he always knows when the smog is particularly bad. His badge turns from silver and blue to yellow and purple. Those without badges may consult their lungs. The rich people live in Beverly Hills on the rolling asphalt boulevards. Sunset, Wilshire, Beverly, where the palm trees look as if they could do with a coat of paint. King-size bungalows alternate with houses in the Regency and the Spanish styles. I thought they all looked rather nice, though few of them, to borrow Lewis McNeese's phrase, looked as if they had much more than a six-inch grip of the racing earth in their concrete claws. Here and there, of course, the sort of architecture associated with the lusher days of Hollywood, and known to some as early awful, still survives, complete with battlements and gabled carport. Bus tours of the stars' homes are frequently made, and at no stage on the itinerary will your guide sound more sure of pleasing than when he points to number 1010 Sunset Boulevard and announces the home of Jane Mansfield. A year ago, in an interview on this programme, I asked Miss Mansfield a little about the house in which she lived. I hear you've got fountains in your living room and a uh, very large dining table with a marble top capable of seating 40 people and fur on the walls in the bathroom. Now, apart from the fur on the walls in the bathroom... Which it, bathroom? Uh, oh, 13. I see. Are they, have they all got fur on? Only one. Oh, only one. <laughs> well, leaving aside the fur on the bathroom walls, the rest of it sounds splendid, but it doesn't sound very cosy to me. It doesn't sound cosy? I can't picture anything more cosy than a fireplace, and every every room actually has a fireplace, and and it's just like sort of living in a in a wonderful uh, a powder box. I was now in a position to see for myself. It was a memorable moment. Hello, Miss Mansfield. This is Robert Robinson here. I wonder if you're at home. Oh, yes, yes, Mr. Robinson. Please come in. I'll open the gate for you. Thank you very much. The outside of Miss Mansfield's house glistens. It has special glisten material built into it, though the light was such that the camera was unfortunately unable to record it. It was the Chatelaine herself who caused the gates to swing open, and she welcomed me in characteristic fashion. She conducted me first to the heart-shaped swimming pool, you're looked at, she explained, if you don't have a swimming pool, and pointed out the message that Mr. Hargitay, her husband, had inscribed in letters of gold beneath the water. I love you, Janie. Mr. Hargitay, incidentally, is still adding to the house, an activity, if you look at it one way, comparable to extending the Albert Memorial. The sand at the pool's side is white, imported specially from Acapulco. The contractor delivered yellow sand at first, but Miss Mansfield didn't care for the colour. It was the devil's own job picking up every last yellow grain. We continued our journey to the front of the house. At the front door, shoes are compulsorily removed. This is to safeguard the carpets, which lie in great warm drifts across the floors, so deep that they completely cover the plebeian hole in the sock, which, for the remainder of your tour of the house, will be your sole link with reality. Well, the room we're standing in, how long would you say it was? It's something well over 50 feet, I should think. It's 50 feet tall. So we're walking through a carpet that is <laughs> like warm snow. How do you get the tracks out of the carpet, Miss Mansfield? 
<laughs> we let our butler do that. <laughs> he has a jolly good time, believe me. We have a vacuum system, you see, in the house, which is a bit unique. All you have to do is plug it in. You see that little blonde plug over there? Oh, yes. You had this made to your own specification. Lock, I oh imagine. yes, yes, we had we had all. In fact, our entire home was drawn up. We drew up our plans, and then we went and had everything custom made. Right in front of us here, the other end of the living room, there is a fountain. And this is white marble. It was imported from. Um, see, where was that? Sweden, Sweden, this marble. We have a table that was imported from Hungary, but this white marble was imported from Sweden. And down here you can't see it, but our initials are in mosaic. That's an enormous fireplace you have over there. <laughs> Do you ever actually burn great big logs on that, I wonder? I know, but we have some crazy card parties in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a, a walk-in fireplace. A walk-in. You know, uh, <laughs> almost a drive-in fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do have logs. We had the birch logs in there. And then we had the mosaic over the... the um, mosaic. It's, I don't know. It's a, a kind mural, of coat mural. of arms, almost. It is it? our own coat of arms. J and M for Jane and Mickey. You see... On the left-hand side, the little hearts in, in the J Indeed side. Indeed, I do. Well, that's my kind of crest, and Mickey has the triangle. I noticed that one whole wall of this sitting room, no, television room, I think it is. We call it the television room, huh? <laughs> because we never watch television unless your show is on. Oh. <laughs> well, we well, well. <laughs> I'm inclined to suppose you flatter me there. But uh, one wall, one entire wall, is made of what seem to me to be fossilized logs. Is that That's correct? That's very cute. I'd never heard of it described that way. It is, really. It's, uh, it's driftwood, petrified driftwood, which is turned into rock. This clock here, which is almost, which is entirely spherical, what is that made out of? It's cork. It's cork. cork. Uh -huh. <laughs> the doors are, are heavily they carved, aren't yes, they? Yes, and they match the doors that opened up into the entrance hall. And the doors were one of the things that made us fall in love so much with the house. I think they're six or ten inches thick. What about this splendid table, which I see from here has got a marble top? Yes, uh, this was imported from Hungary, this marble. We used the two biggest pieces of marble we could get to make the table. We put it together, and then Mickey actually made the table himself. Mickey actually... With his bare hands. With his bare hands, you see, right under here. I think this bed, Miss Mansfield, is probably the first one I've seen, which is broader than it's long. Oh, yes. It is. That, that's our bed in our bedroom here. And Mickey made me that headboard out of pink antique mirror. And he made that himself? Yes, he made it himself. And the little pink uh, crystals on the candles we had designed, you know, leading down on each side. And again, you've got the heart-shaped motif repeated in your fireplace there. And a very and a fur-lined, very large, um, what would you call it exactly? Um, lampshade. Yes, it has prisms on the bottom, yeah. bottom like that. <laughs> yes, we have our own bell there. <laughs> There's a heart-shaped. Um, it looks like a sofa or even a container uh, at this end of the room. It's full of um, what I take to be your children's teddy bears and so forth. Those are my teddy bears. My children had their own in the nursery. <laughs> well, Miss Mansfield, this is rather like being in a, in a cave of pink fur. Yes. Because there's fur on the walls, fur on the, on the ground, and fur on the ceiling. Well, it's actually carpet, I take it. All yes. the way it's like being hugged all the time by yes. a great big pink teddy bear. <laughs> and then here's this heart-shaped gold mosaic bath. Who designed that? My husband designed it. It has pink marble on the outside and gold faucets and, uh, and the gold, as you said, the gold mosaic in the bottom. Mm -hmm. 